This is Tommy Seldor 77 and today our guest is a fellow blogger Andreas Mihalik uh, from a blog called Sweden is Hunting and we're gonna talk about all things hunting in Sweden and maybe that's uh, even like a uh, start of a series of the podcast when I will talk with hunters from various uh, places in the world and talk about details how the hunting looks uh, on, in those places and today I'm going to talk about, or we're going to talk about, hunting in Sweden. And according to Andreas, Sweden is the best place for hunting, at least in Europe. Um, so we start in general about how hunting is perceived and how many people are hunting and what are, you know, what is the biodiversity situation in Sweden. And then we're going to move into discussing regulations, gun laws, or firearm laws, uh, licensing and all these things. And we end up diving really deep into details of hunting um, various species, but in particular moose, bear, uh, wolf, and seals. So I guess for the listeners of these podcasts, these are kind of exotic species, or these are species that are not hunted every day. Uh, so I hope that this is going to be very interesting. Listen, uh, what are the techniques, and then how how those animals, you know, how how to butcher them and how to turn them into a nice meal. So, um, interesting episode for all you hunters out there who are either looking for hunting holidays in some interesting place or just want to uh, get the knowledge and expand your knowledge about uh, hunting in different countries. And before I let you enjoy this episode of Tommy's Outdoors, as usual, just a quick reminder that this episode, or video version of this episode, is available on Tommy's Outdoors YouTube channel, unless, of course, you're already watching that on YouTube. Uh, so if you don't, then go ahead uh, and uh, find Tommy's Outdoors YouTube channel on YouTube, of course, and subscribe. That's a great help uh, to me, to my podcast and YouTube channel. Um, and uh, send it to your friends. Share with your friends who might be interested in all the environmentals and all the outdoor topics that we talk about in Tommy's Outdoors. And now, without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Andreas Mihalik and Sweden is hunting. Welcome to the show. Thanks for doing this. Thanks for your time. Yes, thank you, Tommy. Um, listen, I was following your your Instagram page, and uh, it's called Sweden is Hunting. Yes. And you're kind of talking to people about hunting in Sweden and all the good things related to that. And because uh, majority of my listeners are, you know, either around Ireland and UK or United States. Uh, I think it, it will be very interesting to talk uh, to you and figure out how hunting looks like in different parts of the world, in, in Sweden. Um, and yes. actually, that's what you do on your website, right? Yes, exactly. No, actually, the, the name Sweden is Hunting is actually a double meaning because mm -hmm. for me, Sweden is the land of hunting uh -huh. uh, it's 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 a lot uh, of hunting going on in sweden and uh, the double meaning is also uh, in week uh, 36 and week 41 mm -hmm. uh, is the traditional moose season uh -huh. and then sweden is hunting <laughs> uh <-huh. Gotcha. laughs> so uh, even at at work when you try to when you try to book a meeting in week 36 in northern sweden or week 41 in southern sweden then people will be like mm, no i don't think so <laughs> <laughs> and you see this is this is interesting uh thing that you said because a um, couple of weeks ago a good few weeks ago i was talking with with uh David Scanlon, who is, uh, I think he's the Secretary General of FACE, which is the European Organization for Hunting. And uh, I was talking to him about perception of hunting and social acceptance of hunting, which is different in different parts of the world. 
Uh, and this is what he mentioned, that in the Scandinavian countries, the level of acceptance of hunting is very high. Yes, yes. There's um, pretty much every Swede that has some relative who is hunting. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of people are, have also moved. Um, I mean, you have two big regions, that is uh, Stockholm and Gothenburg. Mm -hmm. And people from the countryside, like I think in, in most of the countries, people are moving from the countryside to the metropolitan areas to find work and so on. So a lot of people from the northern parts, from, from the distant parts, uh, from the rural parts, have moved uh, to Stockholm, but they still have relatives out in the rural parts, which have hunting as, as a daily life. Um, mm -hmm. So everybody has some kind of contact to, to hunting. So I think in, in general, it's a very positive attitude. Right, that's good. But, uh, but would you, would, do you see any, let's call them, anti-hunting sentiments raising yes. in the recent time? Or is it... Yes, uh, yes. Uh, you, you have, of course, you have, like, like in all the... Um, all countries that have a lot of uh, metropolitan uh, population, there you have uh, people that... Uh, <laughs> We call them um, um, balcony biologists. <laughs> um, That's a good one. <laughs> yeah, they, 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 they know a lot uh, about nature in theory, uh, reading from the books um, and watching it in the city parks. Um, and, and of course, especially in the metropolitan areas, you get a lot of um, anti-hunting uh, and animal rights activism. Uh, and I, I mean, it's it's the it's the classic ones. It's the Animal Liberation Front, and it's the um, oh, what's it called? Um, Human League. Human. No, um, hunt. What is it called? Ah, um, but it's uh, the, the 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 classic ones. Hunting saboteurs. Hunting oh, saboteurs. okay, okay, okay. okay. So th these are, are quite uh, strong. They are based mainly in Gothenburg. They mm -hmm. go around, if you look closely, it's a it's little bit of a joke. They have rescued moose when there's no moose season and, and stuff. <laughs> so, uh, and they're constantly asking for money and donations and so on. Um, but, uh, yes, you have that. Uh, you have, uh, you have um, sometimes really uh, some, some critical... Um, protests where where this this even might end up with uh, some 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 fighting oh. um, especially around the 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 big uh, the big animals like um, um, lynx mm -hmm. and wolf hunting we we have uh, licenses on wolves uh, mm -hmm. depending on the population that is a very infected discussion and then that's yeah. often where where the fight ignites yeah yeah, and I, and I was actually going to ask you about wolf, but that's late. That's for that's for later, and that's typical. Yes. But usually, where 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 you're talking about people hunting predators, like like yes. bear, or wolf, or lynx, that's yes. that's super emotional for for various reasons. But look, we'll get to that. Um, yeah, I I would like to first uh, maybe tell me uh, and tell our listeners how it started, how you started your your website and because we had a little bit of a chat before we started recording this podcast and you know you and i we're both doing what we're doing kind of like a, as a hobby uh and and for a fun and for spreading information and and you know educating people who are interested how to start how did you start hunting that's a good story on your website but i'd like to hear from you yeah, actually, when, when I was a kid, I thought hunters were just stupid idiots going around shooting animals. So I was not very positive. But uh, I have always been fishing. Um, oh. uh, and and when, I, when I was a kid, I actually had a, like an animal uh, uh, nature conservation club. Oh, so we yeah. went and, and picked, uh, picked trash in the forest and so on. Mm -hmm. um, so I was always close to nature. But then when we moved to Sweden, mm -hmm. um, there was actually there was two things. Uh, one thing is how how to better integrate into society. What is typical Swedish? Mm -hmm. uh, and I found three things for me that's typical Swedish. You have a boat. Mm -hmm. At that time, I didn't have the economy for that. Uh, you have a, called stuga. You have a um, cabin in the woods, mm -hmm. uh, and that was also out of reach. Or you are moose hunting. 
So I thought that that would be a Swedish thing to do. Uh -huh. And at the same time, uh, we were looking uh, at more uh, Sweden. Sweden is very uh, environmentally friendly. So there's a lot of focus on environment and on uh, organic food and so on. Mm -hmm. So we were looking at, okay, how, how can you have a more sustainable lifestyle? Mm -hmm. uh, we tried, actually, we tried vegetarian food, but mm -hmm. it's not for me. That didn't um, go well. <laughs> now I'm 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 always missing a little bit there, mm -hmm. um, and um, so then we said, okay, but but what is the alternative? Uh, well, alternative would be hunting because it's a more sustainable way of treating the animals, and you go all the way, mm -hmm. um, the whole food chain. So you know what you got. You do not have any preservatives or or any strange e numbers in your food, and <laughs> you know they had a good life, and and you. You actually know where you place the shot. You know how, which, which way the meat went, and so on. So um, that that was actually a, a very driving factor in, in taking the hunting is um, integrating into Swedish society mm -hmm. as a German, um, and uh, also uh, having a more sustainable way of sourcing your food. Yeah, that's 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 fantastic um, because I found that this is the element that. A lot of people who are either anti-hunting or kind of don't know what to think about it, they either don't know or missing. And mm. quite often, this is something that uh, almost like it turns the tables. Like, oh, so that's right. And then when you invite people for dinner and you serve, you know, steaks or, or roasts, and and it's it's. Uh, um, makes a different context uh, to to all that. Okay, I, I actually I actually try to uh, uh, honor the the meat. Like you know, people are presenting their wine. Like mm -hmm. oh, this is a Burgundy from two thousand one, yeah. and uh, it comes from this region. So I actually I try to do this because um, I think I remember all of my animals. Mm -hmm. That that I have in the fridge, so I know where they're from, and I also mark them like that. So when I'm when I'm inviting friends over. I always present them with like, okay, this is a this is a moose or this is a deer. It comes from this region. It has matured for like uh, ten days in in the freezer, and this is this uh, perfect piece of meat, and and so on. And the people change totally the attitude toward the the food that they are consuming. Yeah, exactly. And this, are you are you aging that in the freezer, or did you have like a cold yeah. room where you? Okay. No, I have a I have a I have a fridge. Uh, I have a fridge uh, where where I where I age it. So we we usually in Sweden you do this is called forty days degrees. Mm -hmm. So ten days at four degrees. That is the classical moose mm -hmm. uh, maturing, okay. which which you do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, listen. So tell me how. How you how you this is like a two parts to my question um, because on one so I started with first one like how you start hunting in terms like what are the regulations like what do you need to uh, pass any exam is it a license mm -hmm. and and also uh, how does the uh, firearm situation looks like in in Sweden is it is it very restrictive is it is it semi restrictive is it permit permissive how how so you know what you what mm -hmm. hoops you had to mm -hmm. jump to become a mm -hmm. hunter well um you have to take an exam a hunting exam uh it is uh, quite an intensive study so uh, it's um yeah, this thick book uh you have to read is everything from from birds to 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 mammals um you have to pass the theoretical test for that and then you have to go to the shooting range on on that day after after you pass the theory you go to the shooting range and then you have to show first you have to show a secure weapon handling so you're you're going around with the shooting instructor mm -hmm. uh and uh, he will he will look at how you're handling different you have to cross a ditch and and so on and he wants okay. to see that how you have to put the gun back into the rack and, and so on. You have to take the gun from the rack. You have to control that, that there's no bullet inside and so on. So they are really petty. They, if you fail that one, then you're not going anywhere that day. Mm -hmm. And then after that, you, you, you shoot the 22 caliber mm -hmm. um, and, and you have to place it into a certain uh, range. You shoot freehand and you shoot uh, bench. West, Sorry, West is that to... is that the gun that you is that your gun or is it gun that they are supplying? No, they are supplying. It's oh. on the gun on the shooting range. You can, 
Um, you could bring your own, but since you're not allowed to have one before that, so, so you could bring your come with your father or someone else, but uh, otherwise they are supplying it. So you're shooting the 22. Then after that, you're shooting um, you're shooting the big caliber. The it's called in Sweden. It's called class one. Mm-hmm. So which is for boar and and moose, mm-hmm. typically like a 306 or 308. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you can optionally you can do the um, the shotgun shooting, mm-hmm. and you have to I think it was ten clays out of twelve you have to hit. Okay. And it's it's the easy one. It's just straightforward. It's not not the Nordic trap or something. It's it's an easy shooting. Uh-huh. So uh, when you, when you've passed that one, then um, then you have your full hunter's exam. Ah, yeah, you have to shoot a shotgun on a rabbit too. Oh. Okay. It's like a like a mechanical rabbit passing by, and you have to <laughs> place a shot there. So, but then then you have your shooting exam, um, your hunting exam. Um, the the and and they say um, they say that um, in comparison, for example, the German hunting exam is. I think it's really it's a tough one because you have to know a lot. But uh, for example, Germany is accepting Swedish hunting exams as equal. Uh-huh. So uh, if you come, if you're a Swedish hunter and you go to Germany with your Swedish hunting exam, then they, they are accepting that. Uh-huh. Um, when it comes to guns, that, that is differently. Uh, in Germany, for example, you, you get this um, gun uh, purchasing allowance and then you can just buy guns and you just re- register them afterwards. In Sweden, it's the different way around. So if you want to buy a gun, you have to send the serial number to the police and they will they will check if you're still credible mm-hmm. uh, and then they will send you a license paper and with that license paper you can pick up the gun from the shop yeah. um, there is something that's called like a purchasing license so then if you if you know the model that you want to buy like okay i want to buy a sour 404 or a blasa r8 mm-hmm. then you just send in the papers for that one and then you get like a Blanco purchasing license, and then the, the weapons dealer will um, will send the information to the police afterwards, which uh, serial number. But every license is registered to your personal number, which is like a national ID. Mm-hmm. So the police will know what guns you have at home. Mm-hmm. I think you are allowed to have a maximum of six guns, mm-hmm. uh, not more, mm-hmm. uh, unless you have a really good reason. Yeah. Uh, and there's no uh, hand fire weapons allowed, um, so you, you cannot have like a pistol or revolver unless you are trapping. You have to prove uh, that you are trapping. Then you you can have a one bullet revolver. Which oh, is gee. Yeah. So on on the hand weapons, they are really really tough. But uh, other stuff like, uh, for example, a suppressor. Mm-hmm. You need a license for that, but it's not a problem to get a suppressor. Mm-hmm. Uh, they changed that, uh, I think, two or three years ago. Mm-hmm. Before it was not. Uh, get a suppressor for 22 is is um, is harder mm-hmm. because they they still think you will do stupid stuff with it. Because I mean, it's it's like the sound yeah. is really nothing with the with the subsonic yeah. ammunition so that there that's not really going so well but but on for, on for the big guns 308 or so getting suppressors is, is not a problem but you have to register mm-hmm. uh, but that's pretty much it right right so it is so you would say it, it actually looks based on what you're saying pretty similar like it is in ireland um so you would say it's kind of restrictive, but for hunting purpose, it's not a big problem. You just need to jump no. the hoops and, and you get the gun. Exactly. So once you have the hunting exam, you can buy a gun. Okay. So this is so this is work. So okay. So this is a difference. So if you don't have a hunting exam, no. you don't. Then you, 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 you can. Buy it. Then you need to be a member of of some uh, shooting association. And then you have to prove that you are regularly participating in uh, competitions and so on. Gotcha, gotcha. So, so that so would be like the a, only... Like a guns for self-defense or for home defense, that, no, that doesn't no, exist. No, 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 no. So what, what you, if, you, if I would want to get a handgun, uh, then I would need to join like a pistol shooting club. Gotcha. And then, then I can get one. 
Yeah, but you're still not allowed to use it for self-defense, for example. Um, Are we going to would... deep down into the into the details <laughs> of the law? Yeah, uh, that is that is very thin line. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because usually in lawyers say that you are allowed to defend yourself by all means possible, right? Mm. But it never specifies, <laughs> and then it's like you say, just like, no. uh, you know, <laughs> you'd rather no, not. No, 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 very, very, very thin line. I, I wouldn't go there. And yeah. it's really easy to lose your license also in Sweden because the, the license, the gun license, is depending on your reliability as a person. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's say um, if you if you would if you would go out and beat up your neighbor, mm -hmm. yeah. or if, if they catch you in a bar fight, mm -hmm. and you 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 get arrested by the police, yeah. uh, there's a high risk that you will lose your gun. You lose your uh, If if you if you get caught drunk and uh, driving with uh, let's say 1.5 mil. Mm -hmm. Your your license will be gone, and and you will be locked for at least three years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So everything that's that's an offense will make you lose your license. Okay. Okay. All right. So so this is the, what you just highlighted is everything that you need to uh, do to get a get a get into hunting as a Swede mm -hmm. living in Sweden. How yes. does the situation look like for people who want to come to Sweden hunting? Yes. Um, well, that, that's, that's, that's quite okay. Um, you need to have an invitation, mm -hmm. um, of, of some friend or of, of some company that's, that's, um, preparing mm -hmm. for the hunt. So that can be friend. It doesn't have to be like an outfitter. No, no, it doesn't have to be outfitter. I have had friends over, so from, okay. from Germany and, and I wrote the invitation. Uh, then you need to, um, you need to register at the police. Mm -hmm. So you, as the hunting guest, have to register uh, at the police. Uh, registration costs, uh, I think, 70 euro. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the police will, will say, okay, we, we got the invitation and we got your registration and it's okay for you to bring guns to Sweden um, mm -hmm. during this time of So of I'm registering in, in the, at the police before I go to Sweden yes. Yes. through the email. And then, Yes, everything in Sweden is uh, Sweden is very technological, so everything goes online. Oh, okay. everything. Okay. Uh, and then, and then uh, you need to register also online with the customs mm -hmm. that what you are bringing in. So you have to register your guns, and you have to register the ammunition. And then, when you're leaving the country, you have to unregister that that uh, these guns have left the country. Oh, okay, okay. So, so and then then you need to buy uh, you need to buy a um, the annual hunting permit mm -hmm. that's around thirty euros mm -hmm. um, and then you're you're good to go and and probably what is what is very common in Sweden people um, will want to see some kind of proof of of your shooting uh, skill. So every suite or almost every suite is doing this called this moose test every year. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the hunting clubs are expecting this uh, if you want to join the moose hunt. And all of the shooting ranges are, are offering it. It's, it's basically you have a moose at 80 meters, uh, a, a plastic moose. Mm -hmm. uh, and you have to shoot, you have to complete three series. The series consists of four shots. Mm -hmm. uh, first shot, so moose on the right side. Uh, you shoot, uh, place the shot um, on the standing moose. Mm -hmm. Then the moose will start going uh, mm -hmm. at uh, 30 kilometers per hour. You yeah. have to place the second shot um, in in the in the area, target area. Mm -hmm. um, then the moose will will turn around and come from the left side. You place one one shot standing, mm -hmm. and then you place another shot running. And uh, all four shots have to be in the lethal area. Mm -hmm. uh, and you have to complete three full series of that. Wow. Uh, then then you, you get at least a bronze, a silver, or a gold uh, medal for, for the year. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's not very hard, but, uh, but there's people that fail. The tricky part is you have to place four lethal shots in one series. And often you, you place like five points, five points, 
five points, zero points, and the whole thing is not worth anything. Yeah, yeah. But that you have to do every year. Okay. And you get so, a stamp so, in your. So if you're so, for example, if you're if you invite me and I register with, with in the in the uh, customs or in the in the, mm -hmm. in the police station, I come to your place. Then I have to go and do the moose test. Yes. Okay, and then with moose test, I can buy the the annual hunting license. Now the annual hunting license you can buy anyway. You you have to do that because that's uh, that's the Swedish IPA who is selling it, mm -hmm. uh, and you have to bring uh, uh, insurance, of course. Yeah, yeah, and so so at what point at what point I am required to show the moose test result? That is often uh, done by the hunting uh, hunting clubs where you want to hunt, for example. Okay. So in that, case that in, in you're inviting your friends, you say like, "Hey, yes. let's go to the shooting range." Or yes. maybe you know those people and say like, "Well, yes. I know you well." And yeah, yeah. Okay, gotcha. So it's not so it's not so much uh, required by law. It's more of no. a like a like a common sense. Like, hey, yeah, you, know, you need to know what to do. Yeah, it's from the. Uh, it's often from the uh, from the landowner. I want to see that you do not do any stupid stuff or the hunting club owning the area then they want to see that you are capable of doing it. Is it so, so one more question on this when you mm -hmm. is it is it only in ter in case of uh, traveling hunters so someone for who, who comes abroad or is it also for for swedish hunters because obviously if you're a swedish hunter you already passed the elaborate hunting exam well, yeah, yeah, but you have to do this. Everybody has to do this every Oh, so, so you're doing moose tests as a part of your hunting exam? Yes. Ah, okay. So, so what, when, we, when I go moose hunting in, in week 41, then the, the, our hunting leader, he would say like, okay, now I want to see this, uh, the, the annual card, uh, and I want to see your moose test for this year. Uh, okay, and you do the moose test every year. Yes. Just yes. to make sure that you, it's a, like they're saying that this shooting is a perishable skill. So, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I mean, I mean, at least uh, it, it will maybe it takes you, if you're not a good trained uh, person, and it will maybe take you for 50 shots or so. And at least then you have done those 50 shots. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's very interesting. Listen. Um, let's let's move on. So we're we, I think we know everything. Uh, you know how you started and where where you sit in the whole landscape. We also know what hoops anyone needs to jump to actually go hunting. And so now, once we know uh, that we can hunt and what we need to do, what are the animals uh, that you can hunt in Sweden? So so what you're hunting and what, <laughs> what anyone else can think about hunting. Yes. Uh, and that's what, what I mean about Sweden is hunting because there is so much you can hunt. Mm -hmm. um, it's really a big variety. I mean, you have the, the classical predators uh, with badger and fox. Mm -hmm. uh, we, do not have, we do not have any um, uh, raccoons and we do not have any. Uh, we have raccoon dogs, but they are only on the border to Finland. Mm -hmm. Uh, so from that perspective, we, we are safe. Mink we have uh, because they escaped from some farms and mm -hmm. were escaped by some people. Yeah, some like, like that happened. I think that happened all yeah. across the Europe and yeah. caused actually more damage to the natural environment. than. Uh, yes. At the, yes. It's, it's, it's a subject for separate podcasts, I guess. Yes, <laughs> yes. Now, so that, that's on the small predators. Then you have, uh, you have of, of course, you have red deer. Mm -hmm. uh, you have fallow deer and you have uh, roe deer. Mm -hmm. um, that that is the deer population that we have. Um, then you have moose. Um, you have uh, what's it called? Mouflon. Yeah, I guess it's a it's yeah. a it's a species of sheep, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. They they are not really. Uh, they are a little bit illegal residents. <laughs> uh, it's not a natural population. I think they they were escaped also. Uh -huh. um, and they, they are not spread all over Sweden, but there are some populations. Mm -hmm. um, so, but that, that's the deer. Then um, you have the license hunting on beer. You have the license hunting on lynx. And you have the very, very random 
license hunting on wolf. Mm -hmm. um, right now, there's even uh, license hunting on seal. Um, and there, in in Norway, just over the border, you can even uh, hunt uh, license hunt uh, reindeer, but not in Sweden. In Sweden, all reindeer is cattle of the Sami people. So this would be shooting a cow. Okay. So that's not so appreciated. But in, in Norway, there's, uh, there's uh, wild reindeer left. And then you have, of course, a lot of bird hunting. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, apart from the classical birds that everybody has, like, like crows and doves and so on, um, you have the uh, capercaillie, mm -hmm. black grouse, um, and um, the, the snow hens. Mm -hmm. I think it's called snow hens, which, which, is, um, which you can do during the fall and winter time. It's really, right. really great hunting. I, I especially enjoy capicelli and, and grouse hunting because this is a very special Swedish uh, thing. It's called topfogeljakt, mm -hmm. which means you are shooting the bird in the top of the tree. Right. <laughs> my, my German hunting friends, they, they already get the horror in their eyes, like, you're shooting against the horizon? Yes. <laughs> like, but the bullet... Yeah, but you do that in northern Sweden and the population is, is really, really low. Of yeah. course, you're always responsible for every bullet that you're shooting. But uh, it's, it's a classical thing. You, uh, in the winter time, when there's like one meter snow, mm -hmm. you go out with your cross-country skis. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you would, would scan when it's a very cold day, like 15, 20 minus um, and sun and no wind. And they will go up into the treetops. Mm -hmm. and and uh, sunbath or eat some pine needles mm -hmm. and uh, and then you would would scout for them and then you shooting distance is about uh, 150 to 300 meters depending on your skill level wow. wow but that's that's really interesting because you is i mean you would be out in the snow for like the whole day nine hours or so mm -hmm. and maybe you get some bird or you get no bird but uh, it's there's a lot of kilometers per bird, but it's really, really, really fun. You got to be tough. It's you great be tough. experience. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna ask whether whether when you when you're shooting grouse, are you also hunting them uh, with the dogs? So dogs, they're flushing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the the using a pointer, of course, is uh, is a classical thing. Then there's there's one specialty also for these for these birds is uh, called it's a Finnish. Uh, what's it called in English? Spitz. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a it's a it's a classical dog, and then that one runs around, uh, flushes the the birds, and then would stand beneath the tree and keep shout barking at them. Ah, okay. so so and then the bird would just look down on on the dog and think, oh, what are you barking at? And then you can approach because you have the you yeah. know where the dog is standing mm -hmm. because it's standing right beneath the the bird, and then you can shoot it in the tree. Yeah, because it's focusing like a squirrel, on the dog. Like a squirrel dog. Can you hunt yeah. squirrels? No, they no. Uh, had. They had actually. They they had a discussion to open it up again, but uh, no. Okay. There is was it, one is of it red the squirrels biggest. Or the gray squirrels. Yeah, red. 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 Yeah. It was one of the biggest exports of Sweden uh, centuries ago. Right, right, right. Um, so and. Obviously, there are open seasons for those animals that are varied. Uh, yes. Okay. Do you can you give us idea like what what is the what is the best time? So when you buy maybe this is a different question. When you are buying a annual hunting license, is that license specify what animals are you allowed to hunt, or is it like a general license and then it's up to you to know your seasons and and hunt what yes. you can in, in a given season? Yes. Yes, the, 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 the hunting license, since it's only from the IPA, mm -hmm. so it's like a conservation fee, uh, this, this does not say anything about what, when, and where. When you have, um, you have free animals and you have licensed animals. Licensed animals is moose, mm -hmm. uh, is um, bear, lynx, and wolf, mm -hmm. and of course, seal right now. Uh, and then uh, you have... Um, more like free animals and for the for the deer this this might be um might be um agreed in the um, there's some um some hunting uh, communities 
mm-hmm. and they um, they they decide how many deers they should be available for the different hunting clubs in the area. So they decide on that. Uh, a roe deer is uh, and and wild boar that is um, that is up to you. Okay, so are they open like a whole year round? No, you have you have a season. You can uh, you can look that okay. up online. Um, normally, everything is closed between April and yeah, in August it starts again. Mm-hmm. All animals, birds, and and so on. Seal right now is open all year long. Uh, wild boar is also open all year long, uh, but you're not allowed to to shoot a sow with uh, with the Big small. One. Yeah. yeah, with piglets. Okay, so okay, so this is this is uh, the, so there are like a two two parts of that. So number one, you have a season when you're allowed to shoot or not, but then you're also allocated the number of animals within the season that you can take. Yes, yes, oh. so it's like a tag. So your hunting club would get like tags, um, uh, depending on uh, we do for moose, for example, we do. Um, uh, we we um, calculate the the shit piles. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So this is also very special. You go uh, you go uh, um, you go a square in the forest, mm-hmm. and there are certain measurement points where you would go, and then in the diameter, I think of five around five meters um, radius, you would count how many moose uh, piles um, are lying there, and yep. then you report that, and from that the 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 um, the um, agency is calculating how many moose are in the areas. Okay. And and depending on on that and observations from the hunt, then they calculate what is the actual moose population, and then you will get your license tags according to the available population in the area. Okay. And so the license, so the so the sort of the agency. Uh, I guess it's a governmental agency that yes. takes care of the environment. They're uh, they're deciding about the allowance in the given area, and then yes. they're giving that to the hunting clubs. Or can you apply as a as an individual to the agency for the for the tags? Not not for moose. For moose, you need to have uh, uh, you have to have hectares of of uh, of land. To, um, to to hunt on so this is this is often it's addressed by hectares or or how, how big it is often there is the the hunting areas are um, are made up from from one big area and the big area is called air so uh, it's like a moose um, um, how to how to say moose um, uh, they they are they are okay. taking care of them, yeah. Of, they are taking care of the moose population and and the administration moose administration area, <laughs> and and they would get like let's say they get a hundred and twenty moose, okay. Tax and then they consist of the different hunting clubs, mm-hmm. which are members in this, and then they would say, okay, you have one thousand hectares, so you get like three moose, and you have only fifty hectare, you can only get a calf, and and you have this, and then. They try to 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 spread these 120 licenses that they have among their members uh, oh, okay. in a in a fair and equal way. Okay. Okay. Cool. It's it's awesome. Do you mind if I if I dig in even deeper because that's very interesting. Listen. So you're applying. So you're applying. So so maybe first, like, let's establish. Like, what is the structure of the land ownership? Because so, so I presume there is no such thing as uh, public land. That the land belongs to, or is it? So, is, yeah, is every part of land belongs to somebody, and that somebody, uh, whether it's a hunting club or whoever, decides, okay, on my land I have these four tags, and I'm going to allocate these four tags, or is it like this is an area, and you're good to go hunting there as long as you have a license, only you need to apply for that? How does that thing work? The general thing is actually is quite. I think it's quite funny. All animals in Sweden belong to the state, <laughs> whether you have land or not. And and the huntable animals, uh, the state has given you a free pass on them. 
but basically all animals belong to the state. So if it's protected, if, if you would like run over with a car, a utter or, um, or a uh, eagle or something, then you have, to, you have to hand it in because it belongs to the state. Oh. So everything belongs to the state. Okay. Uh, but uh, then they have given these allowances. And, and the, the owner structure is you have, um, you have, you have free land. Mm -hmm. state-owned land this is uh, the Swedish highlands mostly okay. and you're good to go and you're allowed to go there hunt and do whatever you want camp yeah you can uh, you you need to you need to buy a ticket mm -hmm. um, but uh, but this is this is like free land but you still need to buy a ticket so that there's uh, some control of who is hunting okay. uh, for example right now for for the seal hunting um, you have this uh, also this free water, open water mm -hmm. within Swedish territorial water, which mm -hmm. is not owned by anybody. It's very complicated, but even there you, you could hunt. Mm -hmm. um, and there you do not have to pay anything. Okay. Then you have, of course, um, you have the different uh, landowners. Okay. Uh, one big landowner is, of course, the Swedish church. Okay. Um, then you have the forest companies. Uh, there's there's plenty of them. So the forest owners, the Swedish Church uh, owns a lot of land, of course. Uh, then you have the different land owners, uh, forest owners, um, smaller companies, bigger companies. There's private forest owners. There's privately owned forest. There is um, company owned forest. Then you have the big uh, paper producers in Sweden, of course, like Storenzo and Holman and and mm -hmm. uh, Blut Korsnes, SCA, and they uh, they own um, forests in Sweden, or they buy from from forest owners. So um, and uh, so that that's pretty much the owner structure: privately owned, company owned, church owned, state owned. Okay. Um, the rules apply for for. Uh, whatever uh, mm -hmm. the ownership is uh, and the the nice thing is uh, for example with the forest companies like SCA you can buy uh, like a day card mm -hmm. um, so uh, for example when when we are when we are hunting um, birds in the north then we just buy a day ticket for 25 euros online okay and you then you can uh, in in a certain area you can hunt birds okay how you want so is so i presume that those moose management areas they're they're not the same as a as a structure of of ownership so is is no. would that be would that be true to say that if on any given moose and we focusing on moose now if, if in any moose management areas you have 10 tags those 10 tags need like who distributes them because that area is like part of i presume like part of them is owned by a church part of them is owned by state part of them is owned by private uh, yeah. so now who is who is <laughs> you know who gets the tags who distributes yes. the tags um actually it's it's like uh, it's like this if you let's say if you take your county mm -hmm. Just, just as an example, it's not cut like that. And you have uh, ten hunting areas. Mm -hmm. um, these hunting areas are are smaller hunting clubs because you cannot hunt moose alone, or it's very hard. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, and these hunting clubs, they are renting. They are owning the forest or they are renting the forest from the church or from the companies or whatever. Uh, but these 10 hunting clubs, they are in this moose um, um, organization uh -huh. for this county, okay. independent of who owns the ground. Okay. So it, it, everything is, is very much uh, grouped into clubs. You have the, the, the small hunting club, which my hunting club, for example, for moose hunting consists of about 16 people. Mm -hmm. okay. We good. are, we are uh, in a bigger, in this, this moose management mm -hmm. club. Mm -hmm. This is the, you need to be in there because otherwise you cannot administer the tags. Mm -hmm. So I think, I'm not sure, there's maybe eight or 10 
hunting clubs in this uh, moose management association for for that area mm -hmm. and that moose management association gets the tax and then they distribute it okay. in, in between the clubs and every club sends a member into the moose association club and then it's like every every uh, club they they have a um, they have a speaker of the club and they have a secretary of the club structure yeah. so it's, it's elected uh, so um, pretty much so it's not that somebody is just giving somebody extra tax and somebody does not get any tax. Okay. Yeah, well, th th this is obviously my next question. Uh, if, if you know, you have a 16 people in your hunting club and you're getting, yes. you know, 10 tags or six or three, mm -hmm. then it's up to the club internally whether you, you're going to figure it out based on who does yeah. more push-ups or whether you do the raffle or whether <laughs> you do whatever. No, uh, I mean, I think this is Sweden is a little bit different in in terms of hunting culture to at least from my perspective to Germany, where where hunting is maybe it has been the 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 farmer the the landowner it has been a little bit more tradition and a little bit more high up in Sweden is like shit the freezer is empty we need to get some food yeah let's go into a forest and shoot a deer I like or shoot that. a moose I like that so. So there is not so much. There's not so much. Um, it's not so high up nose. Um, mm -hmm. It's just it's just people going out in the forest to shoot something together, so that they will have something on on the table. Mm -hmm. um, you do not have these fine traditions like in in Germany or in uh, Czechoslovakia where you where you have this this. Um, trumpet blowing before mm -hmm. and after and all that it's a little bit yeah, sad you don't have it's that really thing. like no but it's it's a little bit like okay we need to go and get some food mm -hmm. so uh when you say 16 people you shoot uh you shoot your moose during the week um that that you're hunting often it's like one week you're together um with a maybe a caravan or or, or something in the forest, you're you're sitting around the fire in the evening, or maybe you have a cabin in the forest which you share together. Okay. You hunt all week long. At the end of the week, you take care of the 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 moose that you have been shooting together, and then you do sixteen equal piles of meat. Ah. So and then uh, and and they usually they. You know, you you go like okay, you have a you have a fillet. This is a very very good part, but then you have back straps. Maybe not that good, but still a very good part. So one fillet or and the double size back strap is equal. So okay. then you would make sixteen piles where you where okay. you weight in the the meat uh, on 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 yeah, what is equal, what is um, equivalent to each other. And then you put uh, number tags on it, and then you just uh, draw your number tag uh, from from the pot, and then you will find what you get. Oh, okay, gotcha. So mm -hmm. it's so it's pretty much communal affair. Yes, it's yes. not like you go and you shoot the moose, and now you have a moose. Is the whole no. club goes in? Okay, in that way. So uh, I presume that you guys need to be in contact uh, over the phone or or, or some other way. Uh, to not shoot too many because if you allow like now I'm making that up But I'm I'm just imagining that if you're allowed three moose or five moose and you have 16 blokes in the woods uh, And someone shoots the moose it needs to say hey, I already got one So you don't yes. shoot too many Is that how No, we do we do we do have a radio contact. We have mm -hmm. uh, walkie-talkies uh, Which is which is quite standard in Sweden uh, normally it depends as in northern Sweden you you normally you go out and you get your you get your seat somewhere out in the forest and uh, sometimes you sit there for the whole week with, <laughs> without yeah. seeing anybody in southern Sweden where, where I'm hunting then you you do like um, maybe four different areas two to four areas per per day and then before you go out when you when you're when you're drawing your your seat um then the hunting leader would would tell you what is allowed for the day or for this drive 
Uh, so you you will know what you're allowed to shoot and what's okay. left on the license. Okay. And in this moose uh, management area, there's also the there's also communication going on. Like okay, what have we shot? Because what you're aiming for with moose uh, population is that you you shoot equally, which means you should shoot one bull, mm -hmm. one cow, two calves. Okay. okay. That that would be an equal. Uh, management okay gotcha gotcha well that's i like it that's interesting and and, and i like it's it's the way what if someone is uh you know listening to that and and really want to go hunting in sweden what time of the year would you recommend as the best to plan hunting trip to sweden week 41 onwards week 41 onwards so, because then everything is open okay okay very good very good good this is so I want to specifically ask you about uh, hunting three animals, and I, you don't have bear, right? In in Sweden. Yeah, we have. Is it? Have. Is it? Is it? Can you hunt bear? Yes. Oh, it's really? license. Hmm? It's license, so we can have, hunt bear as well. Wow. Yes. Okay. So I think we we covered pretty much hunting moose. Is there anything left mm -hmm. on the moose hunting that we haven't spoken, but it's worth talking about? Uh, the trophy is the shooters. Okay. Oh. And the uh, and like I think like in every country the organs are the shooters. So the heart is the shooters, the liver and and everything that is belonging to the shooter. Okay. Uh, and the very classical thing is you would uh, take the heart and uh, warm smoke it, mm -hmm. and you would bring it to the next hunt as uh, as the snack. Oh, in between. oh, that's so, nice. So smoked, smoked moose heart is the is the classical okay. hunting thing. So, so, but but what you mentioned, it pays to actually shoot the animal because you get to keep the the antlers, you get to keep the trophy, yes. and, and you have uh, yes. liver and all that. Okay. okay. Yes. Cool. So we know how how moose hunting looks like. Mm. Now, so so since I ask about bear, tell me about bear hunting. Is it brown? It's brown uh, bear, right? Yeah, it's brown bear. It's it's European brown bear. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, they are much smaller than the grizzly mm -hmm. in Canada. Um, I don't know because my daughter asked me, "Daddy, when are you going bear hunting?" And I said, "Like, no, I, I I don't think I'm man enough for that." <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now it's it's really it's it's, it's a tough hunt. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of specialized people that are doing this uh, bear hunting. Uh, they have uh, special trained dogs. Um, oh, and, you're um, dogs. Yes. Uh, sorry, I forgot to mention that. Maybe, but in general, we we can maybe talk about that after mm -hmm. after the beer. But then uh, we have a lot of uh, dog hunting. But um, so beer hunting uh, mainly in the northern parts. Mm -hmm. They also go on licenses. Uh, it's it's similarly managed. So, but there you're reporting directly to the to the country. Mm -hmm. Uh, county, county, sorry, mm -hmm. uh, and and when the tags are done, the tags are done. This is more like a live reporting. You have one hour to to report um, okay. your beer, um, and um, then uh, when it's over, it's over. Um, so then, are, so uh, then, the, the, other people, other hunters, getting some sort of information from that. Yes. Because I presume yes. there's an area, and there's a there's a one tag, and there's a five hunters, and the whoever gets yes. the bear gets the bear, yes. and then the rest of them are gets notified. Yes. Hey, it's just so season's yes. just closed because. They, yes, exactly, exactly, and um, every year people get uh, hurt, mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's it's not a, it's it's really not. A, a tourist hunt, uh, so to mm -hmm. say, for for people in shorts, it's it's a tough hunt. Yeah. Uh, uh, when you shoot a beer, they they get really really mad. Mm -hmm. um, so there there are people getting hurt or even killed every year. So yeah, yeah. That's well, why I, I said like I'm, in I'm Poland. I, I I made a trip to Poland a couple of years ago just to just to see a brown bear because you're not allowed to hunt them, and. Yeah. Uh, most of the accidents involved bear uh, are just people's stupidity, you know, yeah. going going where they shouldn't go and so on. What caliber would you use for brown bear? I presume that, that you, you're talking about some magnum calibers rather than 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. 
I'm not I'm not sure. A nine point three is a quite popular caliber for moose hunting, and I, I would assume they also use it for beer. Uh, but uh, I'm not yeah. really. No, but you're right. Effect. The 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 the, the, the cartridge that will take moose down will take a brown bear down. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so so that's a tough hunt, and that's uh, that's that's still to go. That's in front of you, Andreas. Right? Yes, yes. You have to look forward to something. <laughs> okay, um, okay. So two but, animals. But mm -hmm. but there's also like the moose test. There's a beer test. Oh, how does it look like? That yeah, uh, that is you need to shoot uh, at the beer from different distances. Mm -hmm. Uh, 80 meters with uh, with the support and without support freehand, and the last one I th I think you have to get uh, get as many shots off as you as you can get. Uh -huh. But this is also this is like the moose test. If you want to go beer hunting, you should have done this beer test. Mm -hmm. uh, and and the problem is when when you have the in this little last test the beer um, the 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 beer um, Face. Go, um, yeah is facing you. Mm -hmm. And then the heart is like is like this only. So the the critical area is this mm -hmm. size, and mm -hmm. and this is the only to teach you also. Uh, if you do not get the lethal shot off at the distance from the side, yeah, you have a problem. Yeah, you have well, a that problem. makes sense. So so you can actually try to stop yes. the charging bear. Um, yes. Cool. That's you know like one thing that comes to me is like that uh, surely the level of train the level of training the level of skill is is pretty decent because of these of all those tests so so yeah. you don't you don't have you know blokes who are struggling to do four inch group from from you know hundred meters no. prone position because they wouldn't pass any of these tests and they have no place no. in the woods that's good no. That's good. That's good. Okay. Um, I, I let you choose because I want to ask you about two other animals, hunting two other animals. That's seal and wolf. So which one would yes. you go first? Um, wolf is very easy. Okay. I haven't, I haven't done it. Mm -hmm. um, and that is, that is for two reasons, actually. One reason is that um, it's very limited licenses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The second one is um, it's 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 really a pain in the back because people are getting mad like crazy. Um, just to give you an idea about it, there you have this um, traffic. Um, as a people who who are looking up uh, the traffic accidents, hunters who go out to find the injured animals mm -hmm. in the middle of the night to 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 relieve them of their of their pain. Mm -hmm. um, there was a wolf that was run over by a car mm -hmm. went into the woods police called the the respective hunter the hunter shot the wolf because he was badly damaged mm -hmm. uh, weeks later animal activists burned up his car smashed his windows painted his garage door so all everything that is connected to wolf hunting is really really infected mm -hmm. if i would do it uh, I would not talk about it mm -hmm. because it's, it's just for for me. It's just painting a, a target on your back. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that, wolf, wolf is really infected. Really, really infected. That's sad. I I read a I read an article about the uh, a controversy surrounding wolf hunting in in Sweden and how. Um, how scientific research is is uh, misused to issue tags and then obviously i presume it's highly political as well because obviously yes. farmers want all yes. the wolf gone and yes. and then I, I you know i am pretty sure that politicians are also listening to those uh, uh farming lobbyists who want wolf gone and so i i I presume it's a mess on all aspects yes. of it. Starting it's, it's number a number of license, issuing a license, and then people who are actually going to use the license and all that. Yes, yes, and the and the problem is the the problem is uh, every time there's a license issued for wolf and for lynx, not so much for beer, strangely, but uh, then the uh, uh, animal activist groups or the 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 uh, environmentalist groups. They go to court 
and they they get a temporary hold on that hunting. Mm -hmm. And then it goes to the court, and it goes on and on and on, and then hunting season is over. Uh -huh. Yeah. So is is this every year? And and the the infection is with with the wolf is they they made some scientific fact um, study said we need 150 wolves to have it survivable in Sweden. And then the the um, lawmakers said, okay, let's make it 300 to be on the safe side. So 300 it is. Um, they collected, um, 100 groups collected uh, um, samples of, of, uh, of, uh, of the excrements and sent it for DNA analysis. Uh, according to that, it's 400, more than 400 different DNA profiles mm -hmm. uh, in the excrements found. So you do not have 300, you have 400. Mm -hmm. um, but still the discussion is on if, if there should be licensed hunting or not. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so, I heard that I mean, they are the law says, incredibly inbred that the population is not, not diverse genetically and there were discussions about bringing wolves yeah. from, from other countries, from Russia or something to, to yeah. being more genetically diverse and so on. Yeah, they, they, have, they make a lot of fuss about genetically important wolves. So they get a special treatment. They, they, if they end up in the wrong area, then they will be... Then, then they will be caught and, and brought back to the original area. Uh -huh. um, there is um, wolves appearing from sometimes from out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. So you wonder where they come from, but there's for sure there's somebody with a, with a trailer. Oh. Uh, but you, you cannot prove that. So, but sometimes there's, there's strange, strange things happening. So, yeah. but it's, it's a totally infected, highly political and highly, um, uh, highly um, temperament yeah, yeah. <laughs> cooking area is yeah. really it's a problem yeah. so one way Emotions. or another we we not we're not gonna see on your instagram you with the wolf anytime soon no no <laughs> not happening not happening no okay. but uh, what i wanted to say with the mm -hmm. with the beer and the moose hunting mm -hmm. uh, i think this is very special the the kind of dog hunting that that we oh doing please this yes so you have these uh, classical uh, moose dogs mm -hmm. um, called Jantund and uh, Grohund, which is greyhound. Mm -hmm. no, no, not the greyhound, but the grey dog. It's yeah. called grey dog. It's not the greyhound. Yeah, yeah. They, um, they, they look like these Finnish dogs with a, with a little, um, little twist on the tail. On the tail, yeah. The tail is curved. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, a little bit like a mini husky. Oh. They look a little bit like a mini husky. Um, and they are really, really good for, for moose hunting. And this, this comes also from, I think, from the old times, because when you do not have uh, electronic uh, uh, devices, you would send the dog off, the dog would go, and when it finds a moose, then it would stand in front of the moose and bark. Like, yeah. woo, 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 very regularly. Uh -huh. When the moose starts moving, then he stops barking. Uh -huh. And it follows the moose. When the moose stops again, then it would start barking. Ah. So you have this. Um, this is they. They work like that. Right. It's like a like a retriever wanting to carry around stuff. They want to stand in front of the moose and they want to shout at him. Right. So and they, these are classically used for moose hunting and and also for bear hunting. Right. And then you just follow the the sound of your dog now you of course you have a garmin and you know where yeah. where, your, where your dog is but then you you have the possibility because the moose is also distracted by the dog you have the possibility to sneak in as the mm -hmm. dog handler and shoot the moose or the dog will will drive the the moose into one of the shooters sitting in, in the shooting line okay okay is that the, is that the only way of hunting moose so are you always no. hunting with the dogs no not always no, no, in my area, because we have wolves, mm -hmm. that, that is where we're hunting and wolves collide. That we're back at the topic. Uh, a lot of hunting dogs get killed by wolves. By wolves. Um, so in my area, we are, we, are, we are having a man drive. So we are 16 people, eight are sitting, eight are going in the forest. So you would drive the, the moose into the shooting line, okay. which is very effective. Yeah. But they are smart. They, if you if you have two big holes in your in your driving uh, line, then they will just stand, listen, and wait until you've gone by. 
<laughs> well, yeah, survival. They know what they're yes. doing. They know what yes. they're doing. Okay, so we so we left at the on the uh, seal hunt. Yes. And I must I must tell you, you know, seal like in Ireland where I live, we don't have wolf, and there is a big conversation around reintroduction of wolf, which is, by the way, nowhere near close of reintroducing the wolf. Um, mm. But you can see from the distance that uh, you know they're, 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 that's not going to be easy. But the, there is a, a little similar situation with maybe not similar, but there is a there is a huge uh, human seal conflict uh, in Ireland, and that's as far as I'm concerned, kind of contagious subject. Um, yes. Seals are uh, protected, and obviously, fishing industry is is lobbying for control. And you have, like usual, these two things. Like on one end, people are saying, "Well, there's so many seals, and they've been decimated, and they critically endangered, and this and that." Yes. Not critically endangered, but the population is, is was decimated. And then uh, fishermen say, yes, but in a certain areas, the population is out of control. And then you have a groups who are rescuing yes. seals. And, and uh, I even have a podcast with one lady from, from Seal, Seal Rescue Ireland. And then you have other people who hate those people. Because, and this is like, it's just a total. Yeah, I am. Um, emotional. Emotional. Um, now, I watched uh, hunt, seal hunt, and I don't know whether it was uh, in Sweden or whether it was in Norway, but man, that was something like that was, to me, it was like unreal because not only you're taking a shot, obviously you're taking a shot from the shore because from the boat it's all rocky, so it's impossible, well, maybe very hard, not impossible, mm -hmm. but very hard mm -hmm. to take a good shot. But then you're shooting at this very small target, uh, a seal that is in the water um yes and then that what happened then just boggled my mind because the guy jumps into the boat <laughs> drives the boat drives the boat when he yes. shoots the seal and he dives into this he jumps into the water to retrieve the seal right yes. and it's like <laughs> it's a big seal it's like it's like 300 kilos right and my <laughs> thing is, and my thing is like if that seal is only wounded I wouldn't like to find myself in the water with pissed off 300 kilo seal. It's like, what the <laughs> heck? So that was, to me, it was just another level because you're not only shooting an animal, then you go and actually dive to retrieve the animal. It's like, whoa! Yes. So, so yes. please tell me, is this the way you hunt seals? Is that like special hardcore way of hunting seal, what I just des described? How does that work? Oh, oh boy. <laughs> Where shall I start? Um, you're not completely wrong. Um, but seal hunting is different. Mm. Uh, in every, in every, every aspect. Um, it's the, it's the strangest, most beautiful hunt I've ever done. Okay. Um, background is, um, seal hunting was not allowed in Sweden. Um, this is the first year with, where we get a license. Mm -hmm. um, before you were only allowed to protect your nets mm -hmm. as a fisherman. We have three big problems for, for fishing. As there's hardly any fishermen left here on the East Coast. Uh -huh. um, because there's three big problems. You have the seal population, which is currently at around 65,000 oh. seals. I just read in Germany they were happy. Oh, we have had we have counted five hundred seals on the German shores and another fifteen hundred on the Danish shores. So we, we are talking sixty five thousand seals on the on the Swedish coastline. Um, um, then you have the cormoran, mm -hmm. which is a terrible fish killer. Mm -hmm. They they are and and there's there's big flocks of them at the. 200, 300 individuals. They they are nesting on colonies with this guano. It, it looks like a desert. It's yeah. dead. It looks like like Chernobyl. It's really it's dead. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you have uh, newly the problem that we have um, international trawlers coming in and, and fishing big time out of outside the territorial water. Yeah. So these three are I I, I don't understand it. They, these three are really really killing. 
uh, killing the population. So the industrial fishing for Swedish fishermen is just is just this mm -hmm. in comparison. Um, but before you were only allowed to 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 protect your nets. Mm -hmm. Now the first year they released two thousand seals, mm -hmm. which is not even the the annual uh, regrowth. Um, but but anyway, it's better than nothing. Do you know what's um, annual? What's a, what's their breeding capacity? I think the capacity. Uh, I I think I read it's around six thousand. I'm not sure, but okay. uh, that's what I remember. Mm -hmm. But um, they were they were infertile before due to all the pesticides and so on. So, but that has that has changed. So they are fertile now. Um, but at least they they gave two thousand uh, licenses, uh, and um, it's hard enough, I can say. Mm -hmm. Seal hunting is quite difficult, um, as as you explained. Now we have this that that this is only currently allowed for for in my region for residents of stockholm area mm -hmm. uh, some uh, other counties have said you need to have a resident he, he can bring one or two friends mm -hmm. uh, but this is very much based on the residency mm -hmm. um, then you need to have a boat mm. to get out so that that's uh, the first problem but that's a uh, I have a, thing I got from the beginning of the podcast. That's <laughs> yes, a Swedish yes, thing to have a boat. So, <laughs> yeah, when you when you are living close to the sea, of course. Now, but I, I only have a small boat, so when once the sea gets rough, um, mm -hmm. it's not so easy to get out. Yeah. Um, then, uh, of course, in rough sea, it's also not so easy to shoot a, shoot a seal. So mm -hmm. then, then you would you need somewhere where you are allowed to hunt. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where it gets tricky again. So you need to know somebody that owns land mm -hmm. uh, or you need to find uh, this public owned land. And there's, there's not a map available showing you, okay, you can sit on this rock and that rock and you can do this and that. Mm -hmm. So this, is, um, this was a long night of, of, of checking the maps and, and finding out where, where you actually are allowed, legally allowed to shoot and hunt yeah. Yeah. under this free license. So once you've, once you've located the spot where you're allowed, that doesn't mean that they're sealed. <laughs> yeah. So that's the second problem. So if you have a friend that's a fisherman and he has the rights and, and everything, then it's quite easy. Mm -hmm. uh, and he knows where the buggers are. But, but otherwise, um, finding the right spot and the legal spot is, is a little bit of a hassle. Mm -hmm. um, we managed to to find that. Um, so, friend of I uh, of mine and I, we went out. Um, we got to this little rock. You mm -hmm. can find it on my Instagram also with some videos um, about that day. I think there's a seal story in my Instagram. If you mm -hmm. if yeah. someone's interested, just check it out. Um, so we went to the rock and there was eight seals lying on this little two by four meters rock. Eight <laughs> seals up and eight seals in the water. Uh, since they don't have any enemies, they are very curious. Mm -hmm. So they were lying there checking us out until we got close range as 50 meters. Mm -hmm. You are allowed to shoot seal from the boat, mm -hmm. um, but you have to... Um, have a um, you have to go through training first the seal seal hunting training okay then, then you are get, allowed to shoot it from the boat yeah no 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 it has no seal test but it tells you about how to hunt seal how to shoot seal and so on mm -hmm. uh, i have not done it so i have i'm not allowed to shoot seal from the boat mm -hmm. um and honestly uh, we tried just for fun to aim mm -hmm. and it was it was um calm sea yeah fairly calm sea um the boat is moving <laughs> you are moving your friend yeah. is <laughs> in the boat is moving um this seal is moving in the water with the waves <sighs> no <laughs> you gotta be no. like a special ops sniper to do that yeah I, mean, like, I have around. i have i have seen people do it from like 40 meters freehand Mm -hmm. um so it, it works 
Um, seals are very curious, so they they don't just break away mm -hmm. uh, when they see you. Uh, rather, when you're going with a motorboat, you can have a seal popping up behind you, like, what was that? Mm -hmm. So it would look at you. Um, when you uh, when you would pop like boys, like for 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 fishing nets and so on, then they would come and check them out because they know it's the fishing nets. So they would instantly check like, okay, is there a fishing net? Is there some goodies that I can just pick? Uh, so they are curious. Uh, we landed on on this on this little rock. So the seals, they they went off. Uh, we waited like. I don't know, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, they were all around and then some head pops up. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can wait for your chance. Um, so it, they, they are really, they, okay, now we left our rock uh, because of these strange people with the boat, but then they come back and like, okay, what, what are they doing now? Mm -hmm. Have they left? Yeah. <laughs> well, what's this about? And this is because they have no enemies. So they, they are not used to hunting or anything. To, so they are just, just curious for people yeah. and boats and, and stuff. Um, problem with the seal hunting is, of course, they are cute. I mean, they have these big eyes and, and friendly faces. And then you have all the terrible stories about the Canadian uh, seal uh, mm -hmm. uh, seal um, killing wow. uh, of, of them. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's not really giving good vibes mm -hmm. for, for many people. But... We are talking about these 150 kilo mm -hmm. beasts. They are really, really big. So, but then uh, you would sit there and wait for for seals to come are they back. Or seals, seals to pop or are they harbor seals? Uh, gray seals. Gray seals. Mm. Yeah, the other ones are currently protected, but but these gray seals has a really, really big population. Yeah. So, um, a friend of mine, we were outside. Uh, it was, we went out all night long. So mm -hmm. we went out in the evening and they like to come up and bath in the sun. Mm -hmm. uh, so we were, I think we were at our spot at, at four o'clock another time. So I was lying in the boat they, that tired, sleeping. And then my friend was like, there's a seal, there's a seal. And I was like, I was just rolling, wake up because he didn't just want to fire away while I was sleeping. <laughs> so um, uh, we took turns. So uh, I, I rolled over and I could just see the seal mm -hmm. and then off went the shot. And there was, like you said, there was just the head um, popping up from the water. Um, it's um, maybe a handball football size. Mm -hmm. um, at what was it maybe 50 meters 60 meters okay so, so they get quite they get quite close mm -hmm. so uh, and then you can instantly see that the seal was hit there was a big splash there was mm -hmm. there was also a lot of blood coming from the seal so i i started the boat immediately and raced towards the seal mm -hmm. but the seal was was lying flat on the water swimming okay so it, it was dead but it was floating it was floating okay. Uh, all the water was red all around. Mm. Um, so then I just put a rope around the head and 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 towed it back to to the rock. Um, that Were you that ready? was Did that. Jump and dive to to retrieve. No, no, but, but we'll get to that. When I shot my seal, which was the first seal that we were shooting, uh, same thing. I was lying there. All of a sudden, head pops up from 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 nowhere. Uh, and um, then I took the shot. I aimed a little bit longer. I took the shot. Um, was a good hit. We could see blood on the water. Mm -hmm. We took the boat. Thirty seconds later, the seal was gone. Completely disappeared. I was like, ah. okay. So we went searching for it. Uh, we had uh, we had a long gaff of three meters. Uh, we couldn't see anything, but my, my friend, he had keen eyes. So he said, this, this looks, this, I said, no, this is a stone. No, no, this looks like a, like a light gray seal. I'm like, okay, yeah, let's, let's put the boy here and, and check. We put a GoPro on the, on the tip of the gaff and dumped it into the water. And then from the, from the, from the stream, we could actually see it's, it's a seal. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, some people have something like like an underwater telescope, like a bucket with a glass uh-huh. bottom. So you can just uh, look into the water a little bit better. Um, some have uh, like diving equipment with them, but at that time it was still very cold. Uh, so we could see it. It's a seal. Uh, there was also blood in the water and so. Um, the original dissolved very quickly from the waves, mm-hmm. but he got locked in between three stones. Um, so then once we finally we had to extend because he was lying at four meters and we had a three meter gap. So we were extending the rod, um, pulling up, finally then pulling up the seal to the surface uh-huh. uh, and bringing it also to the, to, the, to the small rock where we're sitting at. So why, why did this happen? Two total different experiences on, on the yeah. same type of seal. I talked to a friend of mine, uh, Hunting Iceland, on, mm-hmm. uh, Hunting Iceland on Instagram, mm-hmm. uh, who has been hunting seal before. Um, he's Iceland-based. And he said, yeah, the, the difference is that when they come up from the water, mm-hmm. they inhale and are about to die. So my, my friend, he was, he was shooting very quickly. Mm-hmm. So when the seal popped up, he took the shot. And that was when he had filled his lungs with air. Whereas I was alone to take the shot. And that was when he was about to dive. Yeah. So he had emptied his lungs. And that's why my seal sank within 30 seconds and his never sank at all. Yeah. So tip for seal hunting, uh, shoot when they come up. Yeah. Um, you can shoot them on the rock. Then that, you was shoot my, at when, the that was my question that you would, that, that, uh, yeah. So please tell why, why, why would you not do that? It's about what I said with the boat. I mean, <laughs> Shooting them on the rock, the boat is still rocking like crazy, and you have but to have no, the exam I mean, for that. You can be on the rock as well, I presume, and wait. Yeah, you you probably will need to take a much longer shot, but then it's it's uh, you know yeah. the steel is on the on the rock, you're on the rock, and yes, but but that's that's what I said with the with the um, available hunting areas. You have to find a spot where you have three rocks or two rocks in in a shooting distance. I did that. Uh, the other weekend with a friend and he got to his rock and there was a seal lying 150 meters away on the next rock so mm-hmm. he could take the shot rock to rock yeah. and, and that's totally fine that's of course the best thing then you can shoot into the lung and then everything is okay otherwise you shoot neck or head mm-hmm. which is which is a little bit sad for the trophy well, because exactly. there's not much left that's my that was my you you kind of you kind of uh, going ahead and you're answering my question because that was my question that if you if you're shooting uh to the head then obviously you're gonna you're gonna uh damage the skull so yes yeah my friend took a shot uh, on the head on the seal head and uh, there's just the uh, upper jaw and under jaw <laughs> that's all that's left and the teeth are still impressive mm-hmm. But um, there's not much left to show. My, I was lucky because when, when mine was diving, he lifted up the head. Yeah. So I was shooting right in between the jaws and it went out in the atlas ah. at the back of the head. So yeah. I just have a very little fragment of atlas bone missing, mm-hmm. but all the rest of the skull is completely intact. It looks like a small beer skull. Yeah, yeah. They are they are predators. Yeah. Listen, tell me uh, when you when you cutting seal up, how different is it to cutting up a deer? Uh, because that that's again something that I that I watched a video out of curiosity. Like, okay, once you have the seal, uh, you know, it's still mammal. It still have all the body cavities and all that. But the way that guy on the video was was uh, dressing that seal was completely different he was like cutting the hide into kind of like a circle and then like tell me how different is that like everything was seal hunting a total different sport it's total different right <laughs> now um you have so the anatomy is is completely different i mean you have these little t-rex arms Mm-hmm. There's not much, so you you do not have any sh- bigger shoulders or or front legs, and and in the back you do not have any any legs at all either. Yeah. Uh, so you you normally you would make a round cut around the head, 
Mm -hmm. You may make a round cut around the tail. Uh, you make a round cut around the elbows. Mm -hmm. And then you would, um, you would make a cut uh, along the belly. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you would, st would, would start skinning. Okay. Uh, and skinning is, if you have ever shot a really, really fat uh, wild sow, mm -hmm. a really fat one in winter, like with really, really a lot of fat, mm -hmm. uh, take that times two or three. Okay. Because it, it is like like fifteen centimeters of of pure fat. So and and finding where you are in that fat when skinning is is incredibly difficult. Is that fat edible? Um, is that is the, are you using that yes. fat for lard or are you rendering for oil? Like what you do with that fat? Yes, uh, you you can use it. The the traditional way, what I heard is that when once you shot the seal, you take a, a piece of of the fat and eat it. Mm -hmm. It does not taste anything. Uh, I I did it. It's like when you have like a like like a entrecot steak uh, where you have this big fat piece in in the middle. Yeah. Uh, if you if you after grilling it, if you eat that, it, it's like chewing gum, oily chewing gum, not tasting anything. It's a little bit like that, sealed oh. seal that. Um, but uh, you, you can use the oil um, to, in the, in the, the fishermen did that in, in former times. They would cook it to 137 degrees, uh, cook out the oil, and then you can use it like, um, like um, oil paint to, to, to paint your paint your house or paint your cabin right so that's what they did in the past yeah. you could also use it to uh, to impregnate uh, leather uh, and so on so um, but I, I didn't it, it, it has a little bit fishy ta uh, smell mm -hmm. but a friend told me like it's when you bring it to 137 the fishy smell is supposed to disappear mm -hmm. uh, I have not succeeded with that yet but uh, <laughs> you you can use it to Paint uh, like like stuff in the garden or so, also oh. wooden stuff. It's really good preservative, like oh. oil, preservative oil. Uh, but of course, it's it's a lot of work. Yeah. But then the the skin, of course, is very re really really nice, and mm -hmm. very fluffy and and really really nice. So you would keep that if the skull is intact, you keep that, and then of course you can eat the meat. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's also is is just one gigantic backstrap. I was, you know, There's nothing like, else. No, no further than yesterday. I was, I was on Twitter exchanging uh, tweets with the guy from Faroe's Island because right now mm -hmm. there is the, there's a grind they call it or whatever the hunt for for whales, and obviously, mm -hmm. predictably, a lot of people is very upset. Mm -hmm. uh, and and I was inquiring, you know, how much meat you get from the whale and all that, and it was like exactly what you said. And this is what I noticed. Like I also watched a video, the guy who was uh, butchering a dolphin, and I looked at it as like, man, this is like a one giant swimming backstrap because you have yes. no no limbs. You well, you do, but you don't have like a big leg. So so mm -hmm. the yield of meat is is huge. Compared to the total weight, I was a little bit disappointed. Oh really? Oh, because, because it's, it's so much fat. So much fat. Yeah, ah. it's so much fat around. So. Um, I'm not sure how many, how much meat we we got out of. Mine was around eighty to hundred kilos in total. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe we got out, I don't know, fifteen kilos or so. Fifteen. Yeah. Wow. It, it was. It was not. It was not like maybe twenty, but it was not that. I was like, wow, a lot of meat. Um, yeah. There's, That's there's a that's a yeah, there's a really, really lot of fat on it, and and the skin is also very, very heavy. Um, you do not have anything pretty much usable on the on the belly side. It's only the back straps. Um, the good thing is, um, what what a lot of people ask is like, how's the meat? Mm -hmm. um, how's the meat? Um, yeah, some some people say it is like tuna. Oh. Um, we agreed on that it's more like tender, very, very tender moose meat. Okay. So it's not fishy at all. Mm -hmm. um, 
it's it's very um, it's not really stable when you have the meat in the hand. It's like blah, blah, blah. Oh. But once you once you once you um, put it on the on for example on the barbecue, then it really gets uh, much stiffer. Okay. And um, and but it's, it's it's a little bit like very good moose meat. But since they are eating this um, Baltic sea fish, um, it's maybe not the most healthiest food with huh. a lot of that's an, that's, and that's so. another that's another thing the the yes. concentration of of uh, mercury and other yes. heavy yes. metals and uh, mm, yeah. Yeah. And you're not allowed to sell, uh, thanks to you, uh, not to sell any uh, seal products, yeah. any seal products. So you can eat it or you can, yeah, you cannot do so much with yeah. it. But uh, it, it's really interesting. A lot of people were interesting, interested in testing it, trying it. Everybody that we spoke of who tested it was really positively surprised and, and liked it. Yeah. So it's it's not it's well, not bad. Like, you know, like if it tastes like a tender mousse, then I take it. Yeah. You know, that's, yeah. That doesn't sound bad at all. That doesn't sound bad. No, but it's it's a lot of work. I think we uh, when we when we were uh, skinning that uh, seal, my friend's seal, which was uh, around 150 kilos, maybe mm -hmm. that that took us one and a half hour. Mm -hmm. It's really and and. And it's really oily. So when when you cut cut in the fat, then the oil is is dripping from the knife and is dripping from the cut, and it's it's uh -huh. it's really messy. It's hard. It's hard. I can only imagine. Um, listen, Andreas. Uh, I don't know how you how you for time, but we spend a lot of time talking, much more than I anticipated. Uh, I want to ask you really. Uh, I actually have a two questions, but I'm going to start with a with a mm -hmm. more important one. How would you, how would you um, compare or describe the situation of a natural environment and biodiversity in Sweden? Because that's another subject that you know we're talking about biodiversity loss, about um, you know shrinking population of all animals and. You know, situation like situation in Ireland is quite mm -hmm. frankly desperate uh, because there's hardly anything left. Um, and so, you know, when I hear from you where you have been wolf and bear and lynx and moose and three species of deer and seal and all the birds, and it's like, wow, it's like, it's, it's great, right? But I'm comparing that to the baseline that I have where we have like a three species of deer, two of them is, are imported. Uh, right plus foxes and that's pretty much it the rest is the cattle mm. um so but from your perspective and your you know years being there and hunting and talking with other people how does the uh natural environment and biodiversity situation looks in sweden well, that's a tough one i think in general it's good you have uh, you have a lot of variety, like I explained, a lot of animals which are red listed in un other countries which are huntable in Sweden, uh, since they have a stable population. Mm -hmm. So I think from that perspective, perspective is good. Um, as I said, Sweden is very much about sustainability and uh, environmental protection. Mm -hmm. um, one thing is there is this thing called. Um, Allemansrett, everybody's right. <laughs> um, it's not a law, but it's it's like an unwritten law, which gives you the right um, to go wherever you want, to wander wherever you want, unless there's a fence around it. Mm -hmm. uh, you are allowed to camp for one night mm -hmm. without any permission. Mm -hmm. um, you are allowed to pick berries and pick mushrooms mm -hmm. wherever independent of who owns the land, unless there's a fence around it. Uh, but you are, by this right, uh, obliged to leave everything as you found it. Mm -hmm. And this, this is, I think, this is, the children get this from early age in the school. This is your right, but this is also what you have to do mm -hmm. to keep this right. Um, and and they they learn a lot about environmental protection. So they are really eager to take care of their environment. Maybe that's why we got Greta Thunberg from Sweden. But um, so the for example, the beaver was completely in, extinct in Sweden. Uh, they were repopulated with beavers from from Norway, 
and mm. now they are everywhere. Mm. So uh, same wolf population is at 400 now just within a few years. Beer population is controlled at, I think, uh, two and a half thousand beers mm -hmm. at stable level. Lynx is uh, three and a half thousand at stable level. So all of that, um, we have this Capicale and black grouse, which is where I came from in Germany. I've never seen one. Uh, mm -hmm. Less dreamt of hunting here. It's it's plenty. You, you, you have to be careful. You don't run them over on the street in, in Northern mm -hmm. Sweden. There's so many. So from, from that perspective, yes. But then, you ha of course, you have uh, other impacts like, like the industrial uh, forestry. Uh, there's more forest than ever mm -hmm. available in Sweden. But then sometimes it's, it's monocultures. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's not, it's not so good for, for all kinds of species. Of course, is you it, have... Is it, spruce? Is, it, is it Sitka what they're planting? Uh, they have now is pine, mm. a lot of pine, uh, for, 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 uh, for the paper industry and, yeah, and yeah, for, yeah. for, for the wood industry. Um, you, of course you have problems with the, with the, with the smaller birds, like, uh, like what's it called? Fasan, the, the, the meadow birds. All the small birds that are living in in the meadows and agricultural landscapes, yeah. there you always have have a little bit problem. There's too many predators, um, so that's 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 a problem. You have the um, eider uh, ducks, which um, they are suffering from something. So the numbers are going down, but nobody knows really why. From mm. what I've understood, so of course you have some problems, but in general. I think the, 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 the population is, is good and as right. there's a big variety. Right. That's, that's what I'm getting from, from, from your, from your, uh, uh, from discussion with you. Listen, Andres, um, thanks so much for that. I really appreciate it. Uh, I learned a lot and I'm sure that, that, that our listeners also learned a lot. Um, is there anything that you would like to finish off? Uh, for for our listeners, like uh, like a, any any closing thought. I think Sweden is the perfect country for hunting. I'm I'm very much convinced. It's it's a great country. Uh, if you have the chance, you should go and visit Sweden with or without a gun. It's worth it either way. If you have a chance, make a trip to the archipelago the Stockholm archipelago that's a total different uh, experience and of course don't forget to say hi and, and give me a follow on Instagram at uh, Sweden is hunting all right exactly so Sweden is hunting on Instagram and you also have a website Sweden is hunting dot com um, right. so so everybody uh, please go and and and, and follow Andreas Andreas, thank you very much. It was a pleasure to talk to you, and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll do it again. Thank you, Tommy. Thanks. Bye-bye.